perfect. Good morning, church. Follow along as I read today's scripture from Galatians 5, to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Today we'll be looking at the next two characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit, goodness and faithfulness. And again, the way I'm approaching these nine fruit is to first understand how God displays these attributes in a perfect way, and then to look at how they apply to Christians. So let's first look at goodness. Goodness means to be morally upright. It is that which is acceptable to God. God himself is the standard of goodness. Um, Goodness is opposite to that which is evil. Good describes the gifts that God gives to his children when we ask in prayer. Good describes the good tree which bears good fruit, which is unlike the bad tree that is incapable of bearing good fruit. Do you remember when a man approached Jesus and asked him, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? To which Jesus replied, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. It's not that Jesus isn't good. Of course he is. But Jesus was directing his attention to God. Only God is good. Only God is completely and utterly morally upright. And if you want to get to heaven, you need to achieve that standard of goodness. If that's what it means for God to be good, then what does it mean for us to be good? First, it must mean to obey the God who is good. In the parable of the talents, when the master returned to his three servants, he said to the servants who had five and two talents, well done, good and faithful servant. Why were they called good? Because they obeyed the master. So with whatever resources or opportunities that the master had given them, they doubled their investment. And this goes for us as well. You are good. I am good when we faithfully carry out God's plans in our lives. For Christians, we are to be full of this goodness. Romans 15, 14 says, I am convinced, um, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with knowledge and competent to instruct one another. That means we are to overflow in acts of goodness toward people. Perhaps Galatians 6.10 is the best description of how that would look. Paul writes, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Now what about faithfulness? The word in the Greek is just faith. which can mean the Christian faith, or it can mean the quality of fidelity or faithfulness. It's most likely the latter. Why do I think that? Well, When you consider the other traits like forbearance and kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control, they're all uh, traits that are displayed in relationships, in community, and in the presence of others. And since faithfulness is right there in the middle of all these, it is referring primarily to us increasing in our faithfulness or in our fidelity or trustworthiness in relationship with others. Matthew Henry, a Puritan commentator, considers it as fidelity or justice or honesty. Calvin thinks of faith in contrast to cunning, deceit, and falsehood. In other words, to be faithful is to be forthright, to be honest, to be a man or woman of your word. Now, we know that God is the most faithful, truthful, trustworthy, and honest being in the universe. Every promise he has made, he stands behind and delivers on those promises. Just consider, for starters, every prophecy in the Bible. These prophecies are promises which God says that such and such event, uh, where God says such and such event will occur or happen, and such and such thing was in fact fulfilled. Every one of them has been. So if this is what God is, and this is also what we should be, we too must grow and mature in faithfulness and fidelity. We have to become people who are so reliable and truthful that our yes is yes and our no is no. There's no double talk with us. If we make a promise, we keep it. That's what it means to bear the fruit of faithfulness. As we begin the new year, as we participate in the COA Challenge, let's especially look for opportunities to do good deeds, display goodness, 
and acts of kindness toward one another. And let's be faithful to our brothers and sisters in Christ, keeping our promises and showing up for them when they need us. Let's pray together, church. Lord, as, as we look back in 2020 and as we look ahead into this new year, we know that you are a sovereign God. But not only are you a God of control, who controls all things, but you are a good God, a God who cares for us, a God who allows us to cast all our burdens onto you. But you are also a faithful God, a God who keeps his promises. Lord, we thank you that in your goodness and in your faithfulness, you've kept your promise in saving us and sending your son Jesus to die on that cross for our sins so that we may have life. Lord, we pray that as we look ahead, we would experience more and more of your goodness and your faithfulness and that that will reflect in our own lives, Lord, individually, but also as a community. Lord, may, may, may we grow in acts of goodness to one another and help us to grow in faith to live honestly and truthfully to, to exemplify these fruits to glorify your name. We thank you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.